Here's how Stephen Hendry forever changed the way that snooker is played and see if implementing similar tactics can improve your game. This is Break From Life. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos and it's fantastic to have you here. Back in the 70s, snooker was played in a much more defensive way than it is in modern times, which is evident when you look at the players winning the world title towards the end of that decade. However, in the 80s, everything changed. Snooker was now commonly shown on TV. This rise in popularity saw the emergence of fully professional players, and this drove the level up as a whole. However, they were still playing the same game, although by this stage they were a lot better at it. All of this though would change when Stephen Hendry suddenly became the dominant force in the game. Stephen had two things going for him, a unique playing style and a desire to win at all costs. And the second person we're putting on the map from Hong Kong is Andrew. The way Stephen Hendry played the game wasn't that much different to other top professionals of the time, and the way it was played was to try and get the first chance and if possible win the game from it. However, when the frame wasn't won with one visit, it was generally thought the players who had greater patience had the advantage because the greater amount of risks you take, the less control you have over the game. And this is what Stephen was about to change, not by taking on more risks, but by using his attacking game to give himself greater control. I'm actually on a fairly large break here and it doesn't really even matter if I miss this black because I'll be so far ahead and I'm not going to be leaving my opponent a straight forward shot. However, to Stephen Hendry, getting an opportunity and not winning a frame from it meant only one thing, failure. And just as blackjack players learn to count cards to exploit one rule of blackjack, Stephen did exactly the same thing with snooker and it was incredibly effective. If you let your opponent back to the table at any stage, you're still giving them a chance, even if it is monumentally difficult. It's a part of the game you can't control. And it doesn't matter how good your opponent is, if they're sat in their chair, they won't have any control over the game at all. So the plan was simple, take on any potable long red to make sure you get in first and get the pack open at the earliest opportunity and commit 100% to winning the frame with that very break. This cutthroat mentality was most evident in the 1992 World Championship Final when he was 14-9 down against Jimmy White. He was well behind in the 24th frame but his plan was exactly the same, to win it there and then with a single visit. And after getting the pink out, he was only left with one ball in a safer position, the red down the cushion. If he got it and finished on a colour, he was left with a fairly straightforward clearance, but unfortunately the cue ball finished here. And this is where Stephen Hendry showed everybody what a tough match player he actually was, not even considering the straightforward blue that would go against the way he played the game, and played the pressure shot that effectively won him that year's World Championship. And this shot is ridiculously tough. I actually got this on my fifth attempt, which would have meant I would have lost four frames before I actually won one. Now it goes without saying, you're not going to win every single frame playing this aggressively, but Stephen's plan wasn't to win every single frame. It was to win the vast majority, two thirds to three quarters, still a comfortable winning margin. But how good does your long potting have to be to be able to take advantage of this strategy at all? Well, to find out, you can try this simple practice routine. This is actually routine four of the routines coming up in a minute. I've been asked a lot, how come I'm not a professional snooker player? And that's because most of the shots I play on this channel is where I'm in good position, and that's why I hardly ever seem to miss. However, I'm a lot weaker at this type of shot. Long straight stun shots from the bulk line to the blue spot. I tend to miss these shots a lot. But don't worry, because I'm not going to miss Bob Lunday in Vancouver, Canada. Generally speaking, I only pop roughly one in three of these shots, and even though I'm better at other types of long shots, this simply isn't good enough. A professional snooker player would be looking to pot at the very least 14 out of 21 or two thirds of these, and that would only get you to be one of the players with a weaker potting games. Hang on, what's happening? That's just crazy. But when Stephen Hendry was in his prime, he was actually one of the best long potters and apparently he could do this routine and pot every single ball, all 21. And it was this that gave him the confidence to be able to take on almost absolutely anything. This doesn't mean you can't play in exactly the same way with less of an ability, but does show you need to work on very specific areas of your game. 
It was this potting ability that meant it was most likely he'd get in first, but it was his ability to break build that meant he would win almost all of these frames. Whenever Stephen came to the table, he'd always try to get the reds open at the earliest possible opportunity, and that meant he had several inventive ways of getting into the reds off the blue. These were already well established shots, but what made the difference is how early Stephen would play them in a frame and the way he would play these shots. Instead of playing a stun shot into the pink, he'd often play this as a screw shot, and this helps hold the cue ball in better position. And once he got the balls open in good position, he barely ever failed to convert a chance. After losing a match where he'd missed a costly black, he revealed that that was the first black off its spot that he'd missed in over a month. Which is ridiculous when you consider I miss blacks off the spot every day, and if I haven't missed a black off a spot that day, that probably meant I haven't played snooker. So you're probably imagining to reach this level he'd be doing quite a lot of practice, and you'd be right, he was playing roughly 6-7 to seven hours a day, 7 days a week. But it's not just about the amount of practice you're doing, it's about what you're practicing, and this made a huge difference for Steven to help him play the massively attacking game that he'd have so much success with. Like practicing how many blacks off the spot you can pop consecutively. But if you want to play in the same style as Stephen Hendry, you're going to have to practice straight queuing to give yourself a better chance of having a high success rate with longer pots. And these routines can help you do that. Start off by placing a ball on the blue spot and rolling through in off into the middle pocket. As you get more successful with this, you can start moving the red wider and wider until eventually you're playing the shot off the black spot. You also need to make sure you're striking the cue ball through the centre, so playing the white up and back through the spots like this can tell you if you're playing the cue ball with any unwanted side spin. If you struck it well, it'll travel over the spots on the way down and the way back up again. You also need to practice playing pots like these when the cue ball's tight on the bolt cushion. Having a go at these every time you practice is a really good idea because it's the type of shot that you can really only play well once you've got a feel for it. And lining a shot up like this can be incredibly difficult. You won't be 100% sure on where the cue ball's going to go. And sometimes this will cause you to miss the shot by an incredibly long way. And that's why this is a type of shot you really need to be used to playing. And if all these shots are helping your long game, you should be able to tell with the routine I showed you earlier and how close you can get to potting all 21 balls. But of course it takes even longer to learn how to break build effectively. But a lineup like this is a great way to teach yourself the more straightforward shots, as well as getting used to the feeling of potting balls consecutively at one visit. Something I've actually seen Stephen Hendry practicing is continuously potting the pink and black off their spots. This can really help you focus your practice on some of the most critical shots in the game. And of course, I don't ever remember seeing Stephen Hendry miss a chance to clear the colours. And that's why practising clearing up can make a huge difference to your game, because you'll find if you're confident clearing the colours in practice, when you get to a match, you'll feel less under pressure when you have a chance to clear up. And when you can take these chances in a match, that's just going to build your confidence even more. But of course, one of the keys to this attacking gameplay is to be able to get the balls into an open position. And that may involve splitting the reds off the blue, and the best way you can practice this is by playing a cannon on the pink from the blue. Ideally, you want to be trying to strike the pink as full as possible, and when you get confident of playing a shot like this, you can try and play it indirectly off a cushion and still get the cannon to practice times when you don't have the correct angle on the blue and you have to play a different shot. And finally, you want to be able to remove difficult balls from cushions, and a good way of practicing that is to put the black on its spot and three reds up the cushion, and try canning them each off the cushion. These are some of the hardest shots to keep your focus on the pot for when you're trying to play the cue ball very accurately. But once you get used to it, playing this little practice routine every now and again can really help your game. If you want more practice routines to help improve your game, then why not try our video Snooker Cueing Practice Exercises and Drills that's in the card right now and on the break from life channel page along with loads of other videos to help you dominate at the game and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel just like Carl from Southampton who has hopefully subscribed after and even before the queue had been using all of his career was broken in airport baggage Stephen's game went into decline and he eventually quit the game when he could no longer compete at the very top but since he changed the game every top snooker player now approaches it with the same attacking mentality and it's this mentality that now makes the modern game so fascinating to watch if you want to find out more about snooker then why not try our video how to play a snooker game or if you want some tips on playing snooker then try our video snooker tips and remember 
remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.